Okay. So, would you just uh, give us your name and the title that you want us to use in this tool, and the name ID? Okay. My name is John McKelvey, and I'm Managing Director at Brackenhurst. So, yeah. So, briefly tell us. Tell us about Brackenhurst. How did it start? Oh, Brackenhurst. How did it start? It started as a farm in 1914. Um, and it was started really uh, as a farm to supply the, the British during World War I. Uh, our oldest building there is the original farmhouse, and that was, uh, like I said, started in 1914 and uh, supplied that army. And then, then some of the soldiers would come up and recuperate. They liked the weather up here, the cool weather, to get out of Nairobi. And uh, some of those that were injured or something in battle would uh, come here to, to heal. And uh, it, that's how it started. Then 1927, uh, the lady who owned the farm realized that people liked to come up here. And it wasn't too far away from Nairobi. So she started the hotel. And uh, that was called Brackenhurst Hotel. And this building, the oldest building as, uh, as far as the hotel is concerned, is the main building. Uh, that was built in 1927 and uh, they built a golf course around Brackenhurst. So if you look at the old pictures, there are very few trees here. Many people know Brackenhurst is a place with uh, forest and uh, lots uh, with the environment, but actually back in those days, there was very little uh, as far as the environment goes. The trees were cut down and it was a nice place to play golf. Um, then uh, after, the, after independence, it fell on hard times and was sold and the Baptist Mission bought it and ran it as a conference center and a retreat center, primarily for missionaries. Uh, and then in 2010, the, the company that I work for, we, we took it over. And it still caters to that same group, but other groups as well, businesses and uh, individuals and uh, tourists and NGOs and uh, various, many different kinds of people, d diverse groups. Uh, come here. So that's, that brings us up to today. We had a very brief history. Mm. Yeah, and um, over the years what has changed and um, of course at the same time focusing on the environment, mm -hmm. of course it necessitated some changes, but mm -hmm. what are some of the changes that have taken place since 2010? Well, some of the changes would be uh, the environmental program started before then, but I would say a, a deepening of that, a, a stronger commitment to it, uh, there's a lot going on here as far as preservation of species. We have some trees and plants. There's very few left. We, even one tree, there's only one left in the world. And we've been able to propagate that and uh, increase the number here at Brackenhurst. But a collection of species, uh, we have a, uh, an NGO called Plants for Life, which is based here. And part of what they do is they go around and collect these rare species and, uh, and, and bring them here to Brackenhurst and those that uh, like this environment, they're put here and protected, and there's some research done on those. And that's a, a lot since 2010 has just been a deepening of that whole work and an expansion of it, as well as the organic food and uh, the uh, indigenous landscaping. We're taking out many things that are, have been brought, uh, the exotics that have come in from somewhere else. We're taking that out, those out and put using African plants. Um, so it's a number of things. It would be hard to explain everything, uh, but a number of changes since, since 2010. Why is it important to, to do all this, especially for the environment? Well, we know Kenya, the environment is, is uh, critical uh, to, to Kenya, not only just for tourism, but uh, Kenya sits in a very environmentally sensitive area. And with a growing population, global warming, uh, the various things the world is faced with today, we know that's a problem and a challenge, and it needs to be uh, addressed, and, and we want to be a part of all of, all of that. Yes, of course, I know that you're mentioning also global warming. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you followed the COP21 Paris meetings. Mm -hmm. There was an agreement for government mm -hmm. to actually keep carbon emissions to below 2 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses also jumped into the wagon, and they also agreed that, hey, don't forget us. Specific individuals who actually do the manufacturing. Right. Um, as a business, of course, do you think also you're in a position to do that? And how important is it for you also to claim that stand? Well, it's very important. We want to get the highest designation as far as our eco status goes. Uh, we'd like to be a gold member 
Uh, but also the Kenyan government has uh, mandated this. So we, in order to comply, we do have to cut down on our, our use of electricity and, and energy, which we're seeking to do. Um, we, of course, that will save us money. Uh, if we're not paying as much for electricity or for cooking gas, uh, that would be good for us and for our bottom line. Um, so it's, it, 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 but beyond that, we would, we would, the challenges in that are, are the, the cost. If we want to go completely to solar uh, hot water heating, of course, that's an investment that's significant for us. And we, while we try to be very cost competitive and we have to weigh the needs and the desires of our guests with what we would like to achieve environmentally. So it's a, it's a balance. Uh, but we're headed in that direction. Uh, maybe not as quickly as we would like, uh, but certainly uh, moving in that direction with that focus. Balancing customers' needs. Mm -hmm. um, have you had a customer actually called in and said, I, I love coming to this destination because you guys are actually eco friendly? Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, uh, well, to many people, it's, it, probably that we saw that first with our European customers and, and entities, uh, and then to some degree the American uh, customer and, and, and that group. But I would say now the Kenyan um, uh, younger population, especially, is very interested in the, these issues and very sensitive to, to eco. Uh, matters and, and how, what you're doing to preserve and take care of the environment. So it's, it's important to almost everyone now. And uh, for us, that's uh, something we're sensitive to and want to, uh, to, to pursue and expand on. And then on, on an open basis, do you think Brackenast is doing its level best, given that it started off as a place whereby it used to go there and, and seek all these comforts and the clean? Do you think it's... it's, it's, it's Going forward, do you think it's actually living up to its expectations? And on an outlook basis, mm -hmm. do you see recognized going going forward? Mm -hmm. On the in the environmental from an environmental sense, yes, I would say a, 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 probably f thirty to forty percent of our property is now committed to the environment. Uh, and we could grow tea. This is a very good tea growing area, but we're, we have a forest, which maybe uh, financially is not as beneficial as as the tea. Uh, but I, I think if people look at the commitment and the investment and uh, uh, things such as that, the forest, and I, I think they would see that we have pushed hard. We've made an investment. We have given up income that we could get otherwise. Um, but w could we have gone further? Sure. I, I would like to go much further, and, uh, and we are. Of course, our attention has to be it can't just be solely on the environment. We're, we're working on other things and improvements and uh, other areas of our business, but we have uh, people uh, who are working on this, not full time, but all of us, it's a component of our jobs now. Uh, even the, the to, to with every employee, the environment is something that they uh, have as a part of their values uh, and uh, increasingly will be part of their goals and. Uh, something they will become more and more aware of. No, it's a great place. We'd love for many people to come. We know what's happened in Nairobi. I've been here many years, and the city is growing and becoming a concrete jungle. And look at this green space. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Uh, you can get uh, collect your thoughts and enjoy the uh, nice, cool uh, Lemuru weather. And uh, yeah, everyone should come and see us. And it's a very diverse place. That's one thing I would add, that the, one of the great things about Brackenhurst is we have people from all over the world, and we have uh, uh, a great mixture of people that come here, and we like the diversity uh, of people. Some people have said, well, this used to be a British place. It's probably for, you know, uh, for more of the European crowd, but actually it's, it's very much a Kenyan place. Uh, but it's very much a place for many people from other wor around the world, and we try to welcome everyone and do the best we can with each person to make them feel special. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Mm -hmm.